I am going to have to profusely apologize to you Zimmerman, uh, if that's correct pronunciation from Germany. This one has been sitting here for, does it have a date on it? I, I don't even want to read the date because it's going to be ridiculously embarrassing. Um, we cleaned up the lab um, last week and uh, this was uh, this had a whole bunch of stuff piled on it because it was too big to fit on the mailbag shelf. It's heavy too. So it sort of sat down here, but then other stuff got piled on top and it was forgotten about. So sorry, it's probably been here for like a year or something. Um, so I'm highly embarrassed um, but better late than never. Hi Dave, I guess you got confused right now. Hi to all my German viewers. Yes, the package was mailed from Germany and I am German, but I follow you from Sweden where I am now a lecturer at the University of Uppsala. Cool, I've heard of that. So these are dumpster diving stuff. Um, thank you very much, you. Um, oh, a couple of old chips. Um, and, but these are big. Oh, they're, yeah, I got to take the front cover off, but they're massive. Here's a better one. Here you go. These are absolutely massive. Look at this. Saved them from the dumpster. Whatever the heck they are. They are all related to particle detection in medical applications. Interesting. Um, two older RF chips. Oh, from research. Wow, I wonder if I can decap those and get them under the new wafer uh, microscope. Um, that'd be interesting. So, yeah, um, part, you know, specialized bit of kit, particle detection stuff. Wow, interesting. They like probably, how many of these would they have made? Not many, like 20, I don't know. So these gigantic boards are related to particle accelerator uh, detection and uh, stuff like that. Particle detection uh, for medical applications. And uh, these were found in the dumpster at the University of uh, Uppsala um, and use a lecturer there. And about a metric ton of stuff was thrown out at the Sedberg lab. Um, I would have to check the pronunciation of that. But anyway... Wow, look at these things. Now you would think that these are memory, right? You would think that's classic like memory bake. No, no, but these are Motorola um, MC10231, which is a dual high speed flip flop, like 220 meg toggle frequency. What the, why do you need an array of those? Okay, some particle gate detection, something like that perhaps. And these are Motorola uh, MC10H116s. These are uh, line receivers. So yeah, they're obviously receiving stuff from the inputs over here and then uh, doing some latching or something like that. Look at this. I think I got a lifetime supply of AD712 uh, uh, precision dual op amps and they're socketed. So you'd most definitely salvage these from board. Like, obviously you can't do anything with the board. Um, you know, it's a custom, absolutely custom designed application. But, you know, yeah, when everything's socketed like this, you steal all these puppies, all 7.4, um, you know, ALS logic and stuff like that. There's the main process, a TRW what the, um, basically. Um, so I got no idea. But yeah, this would have obviously been custom designed for this particle detector uh, application that they need to. I don't know, how many of these did they make? 10 boards for a rack for some experiment or something like that perhaps, but yeah, wow. If you're curious to see what's on the front, not much. Okay, we have something to do with CERN, so yeah, it's that the, I don't know, it, you know like old st old experiment stuff at uh, CERN, serial number 25. So as I said, they don't make many of these things, and uh, you know they're all custom, and this is an Admux. To do what? Wow, this is really old school. We've got a COP402 processor with an EEPROM with no uh, sticker on the window, so all the electrons have definitely fallen out of that puppy. Um, so, yeah, they're like a little COP processor, old school COP processor with all this, uh, once again, with all this detection stuff on the front end here. Oh, fancy pantsy surface mount. Oh, modern rubbish. And this is another Admux board. Look at this. Wow. 
now, all the chips traditionally laid out in your, uh, you know, uh, completely lined up a uh, row configuration like this. This is where you would uh, use an auto router on something like this. You know, it's all digital stuff, so it's probably not hugely high speed except for like the front end uh, stuff and things like that. So you'd let the uh, auto router rip on uh, such a thing and this would be a four layer board obviously you'd have power and ground uh, rails in there and then all your traces on the top would all run horizontal or vertical basically this one looks like it's running horizontal and then all the ones on the other side let me flip it over see if I'm telling the truth yes I am telling the truth they all run vertically look at that so yeah that's classic case for a uh, typical um, XY auto router to uh, just, you know, you just let that rip. You wouldn't do it by hand. So that's a classic example of that. I love the little bodge down here. Look at this. They went, oh yeah, we need to trim something. Oh look, it goes, the wires go all the way over here. We need to trim something, but we want to get it close to the front, maybe where we can get a screwdriver through and adjust it. So they've added that on. It's pretty how you're doing, but it uh, did the business. Once again, you didn't, you know, you couldn't re-spin this board you would just hack things together. You need to get the experiment working. And uh, it looks like they've done, um, somebody's, you know, uh, done surface, fancy surface mount stuff for some input front end on this thing. So, you know, we could go in all day and analyze the uh, chips on this puppy. But, uh, yep, and then it all goes into the digital section, of course. And, well, what process is that running? Nothing. I think it just uh, ties in. I mean, we've got a massive bus system on the back here. It's just absolutely enormous. Look at that. Wow. All the way with LBJ. Now this one's really interesting for two reasons. One is that it looks like it's made by LaCroix. So maybe they were uh, commissioned to do some sort of custom interface. But guess who for? U.S. government property, oh no, Uncle Sam's going to knock down the door, I'm going to be swatted, and uh, they're going to want their gear back. Um, from the <laughs> It comes from the Fermi uh, National Accelerator Lab, U.S. government property. Mm. Anyway, it was in the dumpster. Once it hits the dumpster, it's fair game. What on earth is a fast bus segment manager interface? Hmm, it's a LaCroix 1821 SM1. Hmm, or SMI. And it's got a second board on there as well. It looks like just all uh, low pin count dip packages and all labelled. So there's no processor under there. So it obviously goes into some sort of uh, bus system at the back. Now, I'd actually heard of the FastBus system before, but I've never really uh, looked into it. And it's an IEEE standard, IEEE 960 computer bus standard, originally intended to replace CAMAC in high-speed, large-scale data acquisition uh, to create modular electronics, in, uh, in particular, data acquisition for particle detectors. That's exactly what we've got here. And these are uh, crate based uh, systems. These are actually VME is one of them, FastBus, Camac, which uh, FastBus replaced and NIM I've never, don't think I've ever heard of. Once again, specifically uh, designed more towards particle accelerators. So it's a 19 inch rack mount system with all these cards and blade processors that uh, plug into this thing. So obviously LaCroix being, you know, a data acquisition specialist went, aha, we can make a ton of money designing these uh, plug-in systems. They might have even said even been uh, commissioned by the universities, the particle detector uh, mobs to actually design these uh, front-end cars and things like that. So there you go. Fast bus. Learn something new every day. Oh, uh, look at this. This would have been a dumpster diving dream back in the day when, uh, you know, chips were expensive and hard to get everything socketed. Like you would just fill your junk bin with all sorts of logic and stuff. You'd absolutely, uh, like, I can't read those on the LCD screen of the camcorder here, but you just rip them all out, whack them in your junk bin, and Bob's your uncle. Beautiful. These boards would have cost an absolute fortune to design and manufacture, and then for some custom purpose, and then they got tossed out. That's why these physics experiments cost billions of dollars. You know, somebody, some group's got to design and engineer and build these things. You know, 10 of these boards for some experiment to detect something. I don't know. Fantastic.
I have no idea what an SFDM is, but anyone? Bueller? 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 And it looks like we have a matching LaCroix card, the 1881 ADC card. So it's a multi-channel heap. Obviously stands for something. Hmm. This heap was okay in 2000, apparently. Property of Uncle Sam. And uh, these are all uh, property. There you go. Property of the US government. Come and get me. Um, these are all uh, fast bus. So this is a 64 channel ADC uh, card. Obviously, this is all the digital uh, interface at the back and all the analog uh, stuff at the front designed for custom physics experiments like this. You know, it's, it's of no use to your average uh, engineer who just wants a multi-channel oscilloscope. These are designed for real big high-end system stuff, so they would have cost a fortune. And I really like how uh, you undo the screws and they just slide and lift off. And let's have a look inside this heap. This heap. Oh, look at that. Xilinx. Um, FPJs, are they CPLDs and custom LaCroix chippies in here? Ooh, there they'd be custom LaCroix ADCs. I'll see if I can uh, find some data on those uh, LaCroix jobs, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't be hopeful. Anyway, this is uh, beautiful. There's the, there's the front end of this thing. And, uh, you know, it's not designed to be an oscilloscope or anything else. It's probably just one voltage level uh, front end or something like that. So this is all the digital uh, part that interfaces to the bus. We've got some uh, power supply stuff going up here. But, uh, yeah, like lots of uh, test uh, interfaces and stuff like that, they, uh, of course, that, that'd, be for, um, uh, oh, that'd be for programming and debugging for sure. And sure enough, you can find data on this thing. Check it out. LaCroix Corporation has recently announced a new time-to-digital converter integrated circuit designed for elementary particle and heavy ion physics experiments. This TDC, the LaCroix MTD132, combines high-density 8 channels per monolithic uh, chip, low power, 60 milliwatts per channel, and high resolution, less than 1 nanosecond, that's right, in a single integrated circuit. It's been designed with drift chamber and time projection chamber applications in mind. Is the, the natural next step in the 20 year long evolution of LaCroix time digital digitizers for particle physics. There you go. They're the go-to solution. Fantastic. And uh, works at 167 megahertz uh, clock on the thing, uh, gray code scalar and all the goodness. I'll uh, link in these down below. So the one we just looked at was an IEEE paper. Um, this one's actually in a book, which is on uh, Google Books. They just had this one page. You know how they skip, uh, you know, a bunch of pages in there. It at least had this one. Once again, it talks about this for high uh, multiplicity forward spectrometer drift chamber readout um, and all sorts of wonderful experiments you can do with this thing sub nanosecond timing this high resolution multi-bit tdc can digitize both leading and trailing edges of pulses so you know designed for uh like detectors as the particles go past in the accelerator boom 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 you know it, it basically times the difference between one sensor and the next i would be guessing and this article actually talks about using this chip in the uh, superconducting super collider which was canned in 1993 after building uh, like 23 kilometers of tunnels for the damn thing and spending I don't know how many billions of dollars on it. Oops, don't mention the SSC. I swear you could almost frame this, although it's kind of uh, sort of almost framed already, but put in a fancy frame and hang this up in some hipster cafe and you could probably sell this thing for a thousand bucks as art. Someone will buy it with their cafe latte. Yep, it's from Uppsala University, all right. The Sedberg Laboratory, is that how you pronounce it? Sorry to all my Swedish views. Hurdy gurdy, hurdy gurdy, hurdy gurdy. Now, this is a real interesting board. Um, it is, look, it uses actual LaCroix uh, chips over here, but it wasn't uh, badge LaCroix, and it seems different to the others, so I'm not sure, like, did they make a one off for them? And look, advanced analog. ADC, they've got some specific like custom ADC module there, so I'm not sure what's going on, but you know, like the engineering that's gone into this just for this experiment or to do some, you know, research application or something incredible. Oh no, it's actually LaCroix, it's an 1880F, but like why are they using someone else's uh, 
ADC? I don't know. Made in the USA. Once again, dumpster divers dream. Look at this. Uh, National Semiconductor LH0032s. I think they're uh, discontinued. Um, high speed, uh, high voltage op amps. And look at this. They're socketed. We can just lift those out. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. And last but not least, another LaCroix job here. Once again, two LaCroix uh, custom a6, Xilinx, uh, CPLD of some description. Once again, a few mod wires on here. Look at that one. Whoa, look at that. It's, it's feeding back on itself. And nice little hack over here. Why is it so long? Do they have to add some extra delay, maybe, to make it so long? Uh, whatever's going on in here, it's working at 125 meg anyway. Thankfully, data provided. That's a LaCroix 1876 Rev C. Made by Uncle Sam himself. So thank you very much, Hugh, for saving these uh, classic boards from the dumpster. They're like incredible find for anyone dumpster diving who likes to salvage parts and things like that. And, you know, these things are really hard to come by. You basically have to work at one of these uh, physics labs, one of these particle accelerators, as uh, you does. And sure enough, these things are... Uh, well, they date from the uh, 1990s, I think most of them, there might have been one from the 80s or something, but um, yeah, the experiment's all finished, the money's all spent, done and dusted, the results have been collected, or they've upgraded the systems or whatever, and they uh, toss out these 19-inch racks, they don't uh, need them anymore, toss out all the cards and everything else, and there would have been computers to go along with it probably, and, and you know, tons of other cards, as you said, I think there was uh, like a, a couple of metric tons of stuff that they actually uh, tossed in the uh, dumpsters so it's a real shame but thankfully we got to take a look at these it's not every day you get your hands on one of these things they don't make many of these and if anyone knows how much these things would have cost back in the day please let us know in the comments because we'd love to find out so I hope you enjoyed that look at uh, some classic particle accelerator custom fast bus stuff from LaCroix awesome if you liked it Please give it a big thumbs up and as always, discuss it down below. Catch you next time.